So, did you ever end up with a whole lot of different brakes and you want to be able to distinguish between them? Okay, let's check out this video and you can learn all about it. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at all the different brakes, we're going to identify different brakes and uh, we're going to see different disc sizes as well. So guys, where to start? Well, there's so many brake options. I think the best one to look at is the disc size. So you want to know what type of disc do you want to buy? And especially if you're buying secondhand stuff or like, like maybe you don't buy the disc secondhand, but you're buying all the brakes, but they're all attached and you want to know, well, quickly, which one is which? So 239 is the most common size for the small size. 256, next size up, and 280 is the biggest size. Now, that's a G60, but they'd have four holes. A VR6 will have five holes. The Corrado still had 280 mil discs, and the, the Mark III Golf and that kind of age group of VR6 came at 288 discs. That's just the only difference. But, um, so you got eight mil bigger. I don't think it was really noticeable. But if you take your ruler, and we are in one way around, millimeters, Put it down there, measure across, bring it up, and yep, 280. So these are obviously all your rough measurements, you can do it properly. Bring it up, and there's 256, so just there, so 256 millimeters. And this one, of course, when you measure it, it's gonna be 239. So how do you know, if you're looking at them very quickly, which one's which? The VR6, the G60, it'll have a gap just here, the 256 will not, and the 239 is tiny, so that's how you know that one is. Well, I think to look at the different type of hubs, and then from the different type of hubs, you know which type of brakes to put on. So brakes come in all different shapes and sizes. Well, there's two main parts. This is the caliper, which actually squeezes on the pads, which squeezes on the disc. And this is your carrier, which actually holds everything onto the car. Now that we know a little bit about the brakes, Let's look at this one. This is a Mark III Golf, Mark III Vento, Mark III Jetta. Even a bit like a Mark II Golf 1.3 or non-GTI. You have a disc and a caliper. So let's flip it around and remove the caliper. Okay, so you can see that there is no carrier. The carrier is built into the hub. So if you have any of those cars that I mentioned and you want to upgrade the brakes, you basically have to upgrade your hub as well. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Okay, so we have Mark 1 Golf, Mark 2 Golf. We're looking at what are the differences between the two hubs. So the gap between the, the two bolt holes here, which hold on your brakes, and the Mark 1 Golf, they're only 80 mil apart. The Mark 2, they're 100 mil apart. So that's one of the problems that you can't fit bigger brakes from on the Mark 1. Now you can get adapter plates, but they don't just bolt on. So can you use a Mark 2 hub on a Mark 1? Well. I actually wanted that as well, because I didn't know the answer. So unfortunately, no. So the these are for your steering rack at the, the ends. And unfortunately, one is actually taller than the other, so they don't match. Now you can extend the drop the steering linkage, so that shouldn't be a problem. These two here, hello cat. Um, they are roughly about the same. It's not a huge difference here, but these two up here, which hold on to the suspension, there's a big difference in height. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, you can't use Mark II hubs on, onto a Mark I car. Not, not that I know of, anyway, not easily. So, you can get adapter plates, so you can sneakily put on bigger brakes onto the Mark I. But for this video, I'm just going to explain the difference between the two of them. Now that we've seen the differences between the different hubs, let's have a look at the brakes. So these are Mark 1 Golf, because again, the gap here, when you have the carrier on it, is only 80 mil. So they just won't fit obviously onto a bigger car and the bigger brakes won't fit onto the, the smaller holes for the Mark 1. So looking at a Mark 1 hub, you can see there is a big difference between the Mark 1 and Mark 2. The Mark 2 have these wings outside. So um, we're gonna look at only Mark 2s. This one here, it has a spring on the back but the spring means it's a rear brake. So you have both a handbrake or an e-brake and a hydraulic brake, all built into one. 
where the fronts would just be hydraulic. So now, next one. That's 239, bit crap. You don't want it, you don't want it anyway, so we need to look at it. Okay, so now looking down, we only have two brakes left, so we're going to identify them. We have 256 on the left and 280 on the right. So how do you tell the difference? Well, straight away, we can see the G60 has two little dimples here. The 256 does not. So the other differences visually are this has a big square piece here, where this one has more of a rectangle piece. But overall, like if you saw the two on their own or individually, it's very, very difficult to tell the difference because they both have the same piston sight, which is 56 millimeters. So that's just a, a quick way of just, just deciphering which one is which. Also, this one, the G60, is ever so slightly longer than this one. Now, it's not by much, because you can see if I put both of them together, you go straight over, you can see they're just barely bigger. Okay, so using the calipers, it's about 84. About to there, and bring it over here. Okay, straight away you can see it's gonna be less, which is about 80. So there's about four or five mil of a difference between the two of them, as in, the G60 is a little bit longer, which also means it'll take either a bigger pad or a slightly thicker disc. So now we look at these two. And we put them side by side. And again, they look identical. How do you tell the difference? We look at the faces of them. Again, you can read part numbers, but that part number is easy to read. But there's other times that they've been a bit rusty and just a bit of heat and degradation over time. The all, all the part numbers can burn off them or rust away off them, or they might not been stamped very well, and they're very hard to read. So there is times where you can't read the part numbers. So this is a visual way of knowing the difference. So we can see that this one has what I'm going to call fangs that stick out this way, where this one does not. So how do you tell the difference now, or which one's which? Turn it back around. So the one fangs is actually the G60, obviously it was on the same side, and this one is the 256. And the actual differences, I, it took me a while actually to figure out what the differences were. We get our calipers once again, pull it out, read it off, 23, and maybe sneak it in here, read it off, 25. So there's about a two mil gap of a difference. They do look absolutely identical every other way. Like the holes, everything lines up. You can see there is no difference in height whatsoever. But if you flip it around the other way, they also have pretty much no difference in height. But these fangs here stick out. And they probably are that little bit longer this way as well so the g60 is actually bigger because obviously it's going to carry a bigger caliper and it's running a bigger disc so another measurement to look at on the 256 you just spin it around for easy measurements measured across this way so the opening is about 55 so that's the opening this way so that's about up there and then we take this one here which we have one not undone, and see it's going to be bigger, so it's 60. So yeah, it is bigger every, so the, the G60 is actually a bigger caliper, because when I went to upgrade mine from 256 to uh, G60 or 280, I had the calipers in my hand, I couldn't see what the difference was. It literally do, did look identical. I was like, is there any point of even upgrading the caliper? Literally just upgrading the disc. But no, the disc and everything else is actually slightly bigger. Now it's not by much, but it is slightly bigger. And um, yeah, the brakes. So what did I think of personally between, on the Crado, I, on the blue Crado I have, uh, the brakes were 256, I graded to G60 or to 280. What did I think of it? Huge upgrade. So. I definitely noticed that the brakes were a lot better, a lot faster at stopping me. Um, 
Also, I, I changed the fluid, which kind of goes a little bit forgotten about, but if you do change your brake fluid, it will also help your brakes as well. So I changed both the brake fluid and the brakes, and um, yeah, driving the car, it was so much nicer. You did feel that you did have better grip, and better stopping ability, where I always thought with these car, these brakes here, the 256, the car always kind of slid an awful lot before it actually came to a stop, as in not like the wheels were skidding, but actually just, the brakes just weren't fully gripping and, and slowing down the car because the car is kind of heavy. Where this one here, it was probably the right balance of both brakes to weight ratio. And um, definitely, uh, it's such an easy upgrade. It's like literally undo four, two bolts at the back, two, two bolts and the, this bit here, which is just your pipe work. Change it and you're done. Like It's such an easy upgrade. Definitely well worth doing. So if you do like this video, Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe, I'll see you later. Cat, be gone.